In Central America, Mayan astronomers who built steppe pyramids had a calendar of 584 days. It was based on the cycle of the planet Venus, worshipped here as a Mayan god. Who brought back the theory that the planets orbited the Sun? Nicholas Copernicus resurrected the theory. But with the Church clinging to an Earth-centered view, the ideas of Copernicus, a Polish cleric, weren't published until after his death in 1543. Enter Tycho Brahe, the Danish astronomer, who proved in 1577 this comet was farther away than the moon. Brahe lost part of his nose in a duel and wore a golden prosthetic. It didn't hinder a brilliant career. His precise observations established a real understanding of how the planets orbit the Sun. Working with Brahe, the German Johannes Kepler defined three laws of planetary motion. The first was that planets move around the Sun in ellipses, not circles. The second was that orbital speed varies. The planet travels fastest when nearest the Sun and slowest when farthest away. His third law was that planets orbit slower and slower the more distant they are from the Sun. And here, with Earth's orbit overtaking that of Mars, Kepler explained those retrograde loops. Is that the Leaning Tower of Pisa? Yes, and it is where the great Italian mathematician and astronomer Galileo Galilei first worked. He turned the telescope, a Dutch invention weaker than modern binoculars, to the sky. He found moons around Jupiter and craters on our moon. Galileo saw the phases of Venus and angered the church with his sun-centered views. Was it Isaac Newton who developed a better telescope? Yes. In the late 17th century, he split sunlight into the colors of the rainbow, a spectrum. He developed the reflecting telescope using mirrors rather than lenses to collect and focus light. Newton also worked out gravity, a force of attraction between all bodies. It explained Kepler's laws, and modern astronomy was born. <laughs>